Welcome to our Reform UK press conference. Now, as you know, we've been going up in the polls significantly in recent weeks and months as the Tories have been sinking in the polls. Indeed, over the weekend, it's been established that we are now actually polling the highest amongst Brexiteers across the whole of the UK. We're above the Tories in the north, equal in the Midlands, so we are making huge strides. Why, you might ask? Well, it's actually pretty clear. The truth is that the country is completely and utterly broken. Nothing works after 14 years of Conservative mismanagement. And people want new solutions, new ideas, new answers, and new, real, courageous leadership. And that's what reform is all about. Because a broken Britain, the reality is Britain needs reform. And we've got answers in many different areas that we'll be talking about over the coming weeks and months. And as David has just alluded to, today we're going to be talking about two key areas, healthcare, but also another very important area that, frankly, both main parties have had the opportunity to deal with, but have just completely ignored. You might expect it from the Tories, but what you wouldn't expect is for the Labour Party to betray the working class. But that's the reality of what they're doing. They no longer care. They have no plans. They have no solutions. All they're focused on, frankly, are the woke, managerial, middle class who happen to be eco-zealots. Well, the truth is that actually there are some really important issues that need solving. One of them is a long-running saw that should have been sorted out a long time ago. And that's why I'm delighted to welcome, to talk about this, our Member of Parliament for Ashfield to talk about the mine workers' pension fund scandal and our solution. So please give a warm welcome. Lee, thank you very much indeed. And be under no doubt whatsoever, that commitment to sort out the scandal of the mine workers' pension scheme and the con that's gone on over there in Westminster and the Treasury that will be in our contract with the people. And my challenge to the Labour Party, you claim to be the party of the working people, will it be in your manifesto? If not, why not? If you want to be the future party of government, get it in your manifesto, because otherwise it's quite clear it's only Reform UK that is the party of the working class. Now another area, as David touched on at the beginning, that needs serious reform is healthcare. You know, the NHS, supposedly the envy of the world, but the reality is that healthcare in the United Kingdom is in absolute crisis. And if we just look at a few examples, despite record funding in the NHS, we've got record waiting lists, well over seven and a half million. And that's just on the official list. We've got a staffing crisis. We've got an ambulance crisis, an A&E crisis. We've got excess deaths crisis for reasons that, frankly, most people either don't know or they don't want to talk about. And that's why we've committed to having an excess deaths inquiry. And sadly, unbelievably, we've actually got some of the worst outcomes on areas like cancer care, heart disease, in the developed world. And that is an absolute outrage. No one's listening to what the Tories say anymore. Frankly, we just want a general election, and that's what we're focused on. We're focused on the general elections. Yes, there are the locals, but the truth is the country wants a general election. But there's no answers from the Labour Party really on health care. Once again, they're betraying decent working people. Whereas reform, we have a bold, ambitious plan. We're the only party that says, right, we're going to get to zero waiting lists in two years. Some of you might say, that's impossible. I say, stop being so weak and pathetic. Yes, it's challenging, but we need a national goal that the country goes for. The staffing crisis. The NHS is losing people all the time, struggling to attract people. Well, the way to retain and attract people is to say, actually, right, 
anybody on the front line of patient care in health care or social care, then you'll have zero basic rate income tax for three years. That is a significant increase in the net pay. We first touched on this just over a year ago. We would have sorted out all of these strikes, but the government ignored us. That will retain and attract talent. The other thing that we need is we've got to bring in serious logistics experts from the likes of the Amazons, the FedExes of this world, from the military, to sort out the issues, the lack of productivity, the blocking all the way through hospitals in order to get many more operations done seven days a week, not four and a half days a week. The second key thing after the, dealing with the staffing crisis is that actually we've got to use the significant available independent healthcare capacity. The NHS needs to acquire millions of operations and appointments from the independent sector. And guess what? Where there's money involved, capacity will rapidly grow. And that's what will happen. What we're talking about here, to get to zero waiting lists in just two years, is about a 20% increase in the number of appointments and the number of operations. Many businesses achieve that every year. And I'm saying to all of us, I'm saying we can do that within healthcare. But actually, we need a grown up discussion about how we operate healthcare in this country in the future. Do you remember in previous general elections, you get that pathetic whining from the Labour Party oh, 24 hours to save the NHS? For God's sake, grow up, right? What we actually need to say is if you can afford to pay a bit more, then we'd like to encourage you morally to pay a bit more. And the way to do that is to actually incentivise people through the tax system. So if you can afford to pay a bit more, we'll give you tax relief on private health insurance, on self-pay, because what that will do is significantly ease the pressure, reduce the demands on the NHS, so that actually all of us will get better, faster care for the future. This is the way to transform the way that healthcare is delivered in the United Kingdom. And it's only Reform UK that once again has the courage to take on this debate that previously none of the main parties dare talk about. Well, we're going to talk about it because we're the only party that has a clear plan to sort this mess out. Now, talking of plans, what's the Labour plan? Well, the truth is, they have a secret plan. I think we might have a picture on the screen here of their secret plan, which is they have a tax bombshell. You know how the Labour is sort of, their, their one big plan is they want to put VAT on school fees. Well, their secret plan that they didn't tell anybody about is that they want to put VAT on all independent health care. Yes, that is their VAT tax bombshell on health care. And what would that do? It would do just the same as what it's going to do with schools. It will increase the pressure on the NHS, not ease the pressure. That's why it's an absolute outrage. That's why they've got no real credible plan. Oh, I nearly forgot. Where's Streeting? He must have heard what our conference was about this morning because he wrote a few lines in a daily newspaper this morning. And he said that, yes, they need to use the independent sector a bit more. Well, he allocated about a billion pounds to it. Uh, he did interestingly say, he said that actually um, the NHS needs reform. That's the only thing that he said that is correct. I think Keir Starmer said that as well, actually. But you're not going to do that if you put VAT on health care. They have no plans. Where's streeting ambition? He said it'll take a decade to sort out health care, to make it fit for purpose. We haven't got time to wait a decade, Wes. We're going to do it in two years. That's the difference between your weak ambition and our robust, strong, rapid ambition. Now, actually, yes, it's going to take a bit of extra money, but it, we're not going to give it to the bungling NHS bureaucrats. The cost of the staffing, the extra staffing, the tax relief, we estimate is about five billion. The extra capacity that the NHS buys from the independent sector and more productivity working seven days a week within the NHS, that's about seven billion. 
and then the tax relief on independent healthcare that will grow rapidly. And thank heavens for that, because we want employers to give more private health insurance to many, many more workers. Well, that'll be about three billion, a bit of contingency. You get to about 17 billion. Well, you might say, Richard, where on earth are you going to find that from? Ah, well, I've got news for you. It's actually quite easy, you see. No one's been told about the true cost of net zero. The National Grid said it was three trillion. The OBR, Office for Budget Responsibility, I call them the Office for Incompetent Forecasting, but there we are. They say it's about 1.4 trillion. The Climate Change Committee say it's about 50 billion a year and rising. Well, obviously, we've been a bit cautious. We say it's about 30 billion a year. So we have a choice in this country, it seems to me, a pretty clear choice. Do we want zero waiting lists in two years and to keep them there? That's the reform choice. Or do we want net zero CO2 emissions in 25 years? That is the Labour choice. So what we're actually seeing is that the Labour Party, the Labour Party, supposedly the party of the working people, the working class, they're quite happy for people to be poorer, to be less healthy, because they are on the side of the eco-zealots who want zero CO2 emissions in 25 years. A Labour Party that was quite happy to allocate £28 billion to their ridiculous green agenda that would have achieved nothing. But they're only now prepared to allocate a billion pounds to reform in healthcare. That tells you the priorities of this Labour Party. That tells you why they are not fit, frankly, to be in charge of our healthcare system. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why actually Britain needs reform. Thank you very much.